on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Meet Max Performance. No, it's not a person. It's Google Ads, a new campaign type that nobody asked for. Google enhances responsive display ads with asset enhancements. And we reopened that window we closed last week because the world changes quickly. Why wait 28 days? Facebook is mad at Netflix for making them look bad in the social dilemma. We're just mad about the bad parenting and the dramatic reenactments. And we celebrated an upcoming new listener marketing o'clock in song. Plus, find out how you can use fonts to make your emails beta. <laughs> All on today's show. Marketing O'Clock is your weekly dose of digital marketing news. A proud part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios located in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Tune in to our critically acclaimed Famous Friday News Show for insights, updates, rants, and much more as we cover the full gamut of digital marketing for you. If you want to follow along, just check out our show notes or head over to marketingoclock.com for all of the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. I'm Jess Budd. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on October 9th, 2020. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news show on YouTube or your favorite podcast player each and every Friday morning. All your digital marketing news from the week. Powered by the digital marketing community. And if you want to join in the conversation, just hit us up. We are at Marketing O'Clock everywhere. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Um, Jess, it looks like your witch was replaced by another friend today. Um, yeah. For any of our YouTube viewers, what is happening there? This is Duncan the dragon. <laughs> he, he tells stories. This is actually my son's doll, doll, toy. His oh, eyes yeah. light up and he talks and he's creepy. He tells fairy tales, but I just, I needed to keep with the sort of spooky theme, but it was the easiest thing to grab. So Duncan's joining us today. Well, what did you do with the witch? I put, she's back in the living room or the dining room where she belongs. <laughs> right. So everyone that walks in the front door can see her. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's got one in their dining room. <laughs> what about you, Greg? What's going on over there? Well, I've got a little bit of spook behind me. I've got a eyeball. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Are you kidding? Can you believe that that just happened? Did you do that on purpose? No, that it just fell down right there. The witch. Wow. For I had a very nice it. eyeball wreath and it magically <laughs> fell down the minute that I pointed at it. And you can see that unbelievable thing that, I mean, I use those command strips. It's no way I could have predicted that, but maybe the witch has granted me some powers here. He's you really see- mad over on the search engine journal youtube channel so just being nothing but spooky here shep what, what's up with you well greg and jess already know this but our listeners don't i guess um we have a new marketing o'clock listener coming in january me and my husband are expecting exciting expecting times what? over here <laughs> well that's what i was gonna say so i've been trying to do these yoga videos these prenatal yoga videos like just trying to be active and the lady like says baby like Moira Rose and she's like <laughs> the baby. <laughs> it's like not quite like Moira Rose but that's my impression and she says the weirdest thing before like if you thought yoga was weird before like try doing a prenatal one so she'll be like set your intention for the day and for your baby. <laughs> and she's like you're dancing with the baby now. Every breath breathes, li- breathes life into your baby. And then at the end, she says, namaste to you and namaste to the babies. Well, Shep, congrats for you and your baby. And from our uh, stats and information guy, your husband. Thank you. Yeah. So it wasn't a big secret, but I haven't told our listeners yet. So I have a lot of funny stories that I'll be sharing coming up. Well, we actually got you a gift here on Marketing O'Clock. Oh my gosh. Um, We reached out to (laughs) one of your favorite musicians um, and we didn't hear back, unfortunately, but we reached out to one of your your maybe most influential musicians here at Marketing O'Clock and asked for a little message from them to you. And while I cue this up, we've got kind of a running joke that we have one power song that we listen to here on Marketing O'Clock. 
And so I've got a little message. Let me share my screen. Everybody it's can see not it. not my song. Over on <laughs> YouTube. Um, so here we go. Oh my gosh. Ship. Oh, ship. Are you kidding me? Congratulations to you. I hope the baby does just fine. I just want you to know there's only a 72% chance that it's mine. But Chef, yes. I hope uh, <laughs> I hope marketing a clock goes good from now on as well. I'm gonna have to download that. And happy pregnancy. And I'm glad it's not mine this this time. Or is okay. it? Okay. Who? What is this My man's baby comes name? Out. Let me know if it has a really strong jawline. <laughs> and then I'll decide. I love you. Bye. Okay. My husband has a strong jawline too. So. What oh. in the world? <laughs> Just did you know? <laughs> I have to tell my mom not to watch this episode. I figure you're going to want a lot of it cut out. I cut out 90% <laughs> of the song for what it's worth. It is the lead guitarist of the band Steel Panther. There's a song, Eyes of a Panther, that we listen to. Jess and I used to listen to. Not me. Shep came on and hated it. So we had the guitarist <laughs> write a little song for her. And what is his name? Can we Satchel. say it on the Yeah, Satchel from Steel Panther. Oh, because some of them have bad names, right? No. So. <laughs> oh it's... my God. Um, thanks, but no thanks. Too late. It's in been the done. world. <laughs> I love you kept trying to cut him off like he was gonna stop talking, but he just kept going. <laughs> that man. Oh that was so cute. you probably won't hear the full version, even though some of it was already censored. It'll probably oh be a little God. bit more censored out to and make I may it. I made this joke to Greg earlier in the week. The good news is I do the show with my headphones in because the baby can hear noises outside the womb, but at this point, but he doesn't hear, he or she, we don't know the gender, any of the things that Greg is saying on the show when he gets bleeped. And the baby will not hear that terrible song either. Maybe when it's 18. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. This happened before you were born. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to move on from that. Wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, our phone lines are open. If you have a grievance to air or a spicy take to share or a song you want to sing us, anything you want to get off your chest, you can give us a call by visiting call.marketingoclock.com. Leave us a message and you just might hear your voice on the next show. I don't know how we can top that. <laughs> <laughs> and please leave us a review or just say something nice. Recommend us to a friend. It makes it all worthwhile. And remember, you can sign up for the SEJ Summit. It is January 12th, going to be the show of the year. And at 2.10 on day one, the main stage, we're going to be bringing you original content, Marketing O'Clock Live. And we're doing it live, Bill O'Reilly style. You can be there <laughs> for only 75 bucks if you reserve a ticket today. And continuing along the goodness that we're bringing you, we have another Marketing O Talk coming your way Tuesday. The last edition with Julie Bacini and Andrea Cruz was a success, maybe our most listened to podcast of the year. People loved it on YouTube. And we've got one on LinkedIn ads coming out Tuesday. We've got AJ Wilcox 
Mark Saltarelli from Marketing Clock, and Andrea Cruz back again to talk about LinkedIn ads. And I think, and, and, and moderated by the one and only Shep. Oh, Shep, <laughs> who, <laughs> who did a fantastic job. And I think it is the best 55 minutes that you'll hear on LinkedIn ads in your life. So head on over to the show notes or follow us on Marketing Clock on social. You can subscribe for notifications when that YouTube video goes live. And it's going to be right before PPC chat on Tuesday, uh, 11 o'clock. Um, that this coming Tuesday. Today's episode of Marketing O'Clock is brought to you by Upfluence. With Upfluence's all-in-one platform, marketers can streamline their influencer marketing campaigns and scale their influencer programs in no time. Build influencer lists and contact them at scale, track all of your collaborations, and measure your campaign results all in a single platform. Start streamlining your influencer marketing campaigns today. Go to get dot upfluence.com forward slash sej to get started that is get dot upfluence.com forward slash sej to get started we are super excited about this partnership this is something that we don't talk enough about and we're going to bring to you the power of this tool so we're going to bring up a few other features that you might be able to do. There are some relates we're going to have in future episodes on how it can enhance your SEO and link building opportunities. This is a very, very powerful tool. Get to upfluence.com forward slash SEJ to check it out. And getting into the news this week, finally, Google announced that they are releasing a new insights page with a trend section that shows current and emerging search demand for your products, including audience and forecasting insights. So this is one of the big announcements that they made at Ad Week. And on this insights page, there are some really intense new reports. And I'm not just saying that because the example is an outdoor camping company and all of the examples are about tents. They really give you some cool new insights. So in this example here, they have the latest trends and they show a search trend or performance change that's detected in your campaigns. Or then they have a forecasted trend that they're predicting. So they're saying interest in skiing is predicted to increase in November. Um, and then they also have here, they have it broken out by audience and weekly changes in the search intent for the different affinity and in-market audiences that you might want to target for your campaigns based on your industry. They also have a really cool map. This one's of the United States and it says interest for tents in the United States and shows like different color scales for how people are searching. Um, lots of stuff to dig into in here and it's not available yet. So we don't have all the information. One part that I don't find very surprising is that it's also linked to the recommendations. So it could say there's this new interest for tents and it's trending high compared to last week. And then you can click right there to apply the recommendation, add the new keywords to your account and it shows you the increase in your optimization score as well. So it's all tied back to the optimization score. And the other thing that they announced were these new performance max campaigns a new automated campaign type to buy ads across all of Google's inventory. That's right, they are eligible to serve on display, YouTube, Gmail, Discover, Search, everything from one campaign. Doesn't that, that sound great? No. <laughs> no, not at all. And yeah, the search ads aren't even keyword based. They're all served as dynamic search ads. And this is what Google said about it. We've been working on automation for a long time and COVID really felt like a turning point for a lot of advertisers because when you have a big shock to the system like this and you're operating things manually, the load is so high. You've got to be focusing on other things like running your business while we steal all your money on bad performing campaigns. Yeah, they should focus on running their business. Wait, they really <laughs> said that? No, I added the last uh, oh, part. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> But this sounds like they're trying to act like this is a nice thing and they're just going to be taking people's money, I think. Again, we should say these aren't launched yet. We don't know anything, but you basically have no control in these, it sounds like. And it, nobody should do this. Nobody asked for this. No. And who is Performance Max? Because he sounds like a jerk. 
<laughs> just throwing ads wherever they are. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it sounds it does like, sound like a jerk. It sounds like one of those those folks on uh, the like the dropship bros on YouTube that are like, I'm performance max, and I can tell you how you can easily make two million dollars in a week drop shipping right from Amazon. All you have to do is buy my twenty nine ninety five dollar course, and I will teach you the ways of performance max. Yeah, he that has like YouTube good. ads. And he's standing in front of a whiteboard and a tank top and he just did 200 push-ups. That's performance max. He could yep. be in front of a pool too. Those yep. are the options. A stunning estate that he rented. <laughs> <laughs> For the day. Anyway, like I said, we don't know. These aren't out yet. We don't know when they're coming out. I already hate them. Um, that's all I've got. What else is happening? All right. Well, some good news from Google ads it comes by way of Abby Woodcock over on clicksmarketing.com. And she said, recently I was working on launching a new GDN campaign and I noticed a new dropdown field for additional format options during responsive ad creation. So it seems like Google is moving in the right direction. Now, what is underneath this dropdown is some pretty cool stuff. You can have a checkbox that will allow you to use asset enhancements. So Google can take all the images and modify them and manipulate them to fit better within the ads. You can use auto-generated video, which sounds pretty scary. Like it's going to be an AI bot, but it's not. And um, we'll get to that in a minute. And you can also make sure that you're using native formats. And some of your old RDA ads might have the native formats turned on. Um, and you can go back and see what they are currently on for and flip back those new options, even with an old ad. Now, the really cool thing, and it's going to be over on a YouTube channel or marketingclock.com if you want to see the examples, is what Google ads can do now is when you allow them to enhance you, the ads is the ads can be really full screen and from the, and not, not full screen, full ad size so that it's a bigger, bolder image. The text can be manipulated. They can change the logo if they find a way to cut out some of the text to make it perform better. It looks very cool and slick, um, some of the examples. So make sure to check them out before you turn it on and make sure it's something that your compliance and everything will be okay with because you might get some images cut off or cropped or changed or altered. And if that's the case, you're probably not using RDAs anyway, but we'll see. Uh, additionally, there is the option of that auto-generated video. And there'll be a GIF up over on YouTube if you want to see how it looks like, but it's really kind of like a slideshow where the, you can put multiple images into your RDA and it can cycle through those images and make it seem like it's almost a video, but it's not really a video. So, and so I really like these features. The only thing that I thought wasn't that timely was one of the images they used. They've got a nice looking beach scene with a woman in a fancy hat on the beach and it says, escape with us. And I was like, yeah, that looks good. I like this ad. And I'm like, oh wait, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> We can't leave the state. <laughs> like we can't do anything. Um, but besides the travel ad that they use for this, I think it looks fantastic. So I approve this message. Okay. So last week we reported that Facebook would be removing their 28 day attribution window as of October 12th. And if you're doing the math on that date and haven't prepared yet, do not panic because that is not happening anymore. So Shane Cicero at Shane Cicero on Twitter posted a screenshot of a notice from Facebook that he received, which I will read to you now. It says, we previously communicated that we would be introducing a small test to update the default click through attribution window to seven days and remove access to the current default of 28 days this month. Taking into account advertiser feedback, we are no longer proceeding with the test for any advertiser in Q4 of 2020. As a result, advertisers will continue to be defaulted to and have access to the 28-day click-through attribution window in Ads Manager and Ads Reporting throughout the end of the year. They then go on to say some more stuff about how things may change in the future, and we'll have the full message in the show notes that you can read. Why is Let's every 2020 story like announced and then unannounced? And delayed possibly to later, but it's ridiculous. And you know what? I wish I could remove the window in my house right now because they're <laughs> paving my street. <laughs> and it's they're really what? loud. Shep, that make it louder though. And I did tweet at the <laughs> mayor <laughs> and say, can you please uh, pave my street? But I didn't mean on a Thursday when we were recording Byron Brown. 
Did you oh, actually rude. contact the mayor about your street? Yeah. <laughs> you. That's amazing. You did this. You That's did this amazing. to yourself. <laughs> what this if I could point at your screen? What if I could point at your screen and make the thing go away like I made my wreath go away? Oh, that would be really nice. I would that love would be, that. Yeah. Well, you're a witch. Please don't turn my child into stew. All right. Let's recap really quick because I feel like there was a lot there. <laughs> um, apparently, this was only going to be a small test, not a complete sunset, as we reported last week. But to be clear, our account last week was accurate according to the information that we did have at the time. The announcement was emailed directly to advertisers, and we didn't actually get that email. So again, based on the information that we saw, it was just going away. But that doesn't matter anyway, because it's not happening, at least for now. Again, according to a direct communication with an advertiser, which we also did not receive this retraction either. So like I said, we'll have the screenshot in the show notes. You can read it again for yourself if you weren't on Facebook's list either. But I was going to make this whole joke about how awful it must be to be a public figure and have to like retract a statement because this was really uncomfortable for me. I was like, oh no, we, you know, we told the people something wrong, but we didn't. It was right at the time. And I was trying to think of like a fun example and I couldn't. And I Googled famous celebrity retractions. And on the first page, what I got was an article from the American Academy of Ophthalmology. And it was 10 celebrities chronic eye diseases and conditions. So it's really nice to know that Google's close variant matching is now plaguing their organic results too. Oh my God, that's terrible. <laughs> it's yeah, terrible. I was going to say, was that a paid result, but yeah, it's plaguing yeah. the organic. It was organic. And speaking of terrible, did you guys know that Missy Elliott has a thyroid condition that causes her eyes to like bulge and protrude? And she oh. continues to lead an active life. She's had therapy, but that's insane. She is so brave. She is, right? And Celebrity. And had cataracts. I know celebrity retraction is like the Steve Harvey thing at Miss America or whatever. And then apparently Tyra Banks did that on Dancing with the Stars last week and everyone's mad at her and they want to fire her. I That's okay. I'm, you. I'm sure Mark has her back. <laughs> Tyra. Me and Tyra. He's always shipping us. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. And this week's take comes from PPC Greg at PPC Greg on Twitter. A low key amazing follow, by the way. Like he's a legit marketer, and this is his burner account where you should follow it. Um, but he says he's got a screenshot from his Google Ads account, and it says get ads credit with Search Partner Network. Starting in October 2020, get $35 USD in ad credits for every 100 USD you spend on Search Partner Network, limited to select campaigns. And he says, IMO, not worth it. <laughs> Hashtag PPC chat. <laughs> I wonder if they're just going to opt him into that on their own. Don't get yeah, him started seriously. with that. <laughs> You'll hear about that a little later in the show from PPC Greg. But anyway, great follow. And yes, don't just opt your client into things to get some free kickbacks from Google. Yeah, I'm sure there's a reason it's free. Right, and search partners, if it's like branded stuff, if it's something that's really on point, test away, no problem. But just using Google optimization score and doing what they say for a couple bucks with your client's budget is reckless and you should not do that. And now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is just something you might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked. But you shouldn't have. I see why am I people from Cami Caruse at Why Not Web on Twitter. She says her latest freak out with Google's unreported search terms fiasco. I have several terms hidden which are specified in my keywords for exact and phrase match. Yep, that's right. Google has, te has deemed keywords I have specifically included as insignificant and isn't reporting them. What this means, if it hasn't occurred to you yet, is that your phrase and exact match terms are going to start looking less desirable in your stats as clicks and conversions won't be attributed to them. And I have seen this in our accounts too, like exact and phrase getting hidden. And it's on the one hand, yeah, it's not attributing the win to them, but then it's also skewing the data for those hidden terms and could make them look better than they are when it's just your exact match keywords. The, the the whole thing is a, is a serious problem. I mean, it's criminal. I hate everything about it. We're never going to stop talking about it. Every, I, I can't rant on it again. We're going to lose our last listener if I do that. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's, 
you're you're choosing this exact term and Google isn't showing you the data on that exact term, then get rid of the term exact, get rid of phrase, get rid of broad, just get rid of everything and just do uh, optimization and we'll auto optimize everything. Max performance campaign. Yeah, there you go. No. It's, I'm not gonna, I'll save the audience's poor eardrums from this rant. So yeah, not great, not good. You should get that Steel Panther guy to sing a song for Google. <laughs> Mad Satchel? <you> know? <laughs> I was thinking like, we should just have him sing all the new songs. He's pretty good. We really should also, Chef, you guys are on a first name basis. You don't have to call him that Steel Panther guy. Like, Satchel. You could just drop his name. You guys are buddies. No. And for the record, don't ever look up a Steel Panther song. It is not appropriate. It's a parody band of the 80s. And it is not for anybody's ears. It's oh, terrible. The one we just played was very nice. The Shep yeah, song. The Shep song. Parts of it were terrible. <laughs> now it's time for this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. Marketing O'Clock and this week's lightning round is brought to you by Upfluence. Upfluence's all-in-one influencer marketing platform helps marketers streamline their campaigns and take them to the next level. That was a bunch of words. Shep, can you tell me why you actually love Upfluence? There are so many things I love about Upfluence. This is our first week with them as a sponsor, and there's so much that we want to tell our listeners. But today, I'm just going to give the quick elevator pitch. So for any marketer looking into influencer marketing for the first time, seriously look no further than Upfluence. They are literally the Google for finding influencers. There are over 4 million vetted influencers in the system and they have a ton of filters so you can match and find the right people to promote your brand. And you can reach out to them, negotiate with them, approve or edit content and receive payment all right from the platform. So it's awesome. It makes the whole process super easy. We're super excited to have Upfluence as our new sponsor, and we'll run through all the amazing features in the coming weeks. If you want to learn more about Upfluence right now, don't just take it from us. Go to get.upfluence.com slash S-E-J. That's get.upfluence, U-P-F-L-U-E-N-C-E dot com slash S-E-J, like search engine journal. And getting into the paid universe this week, Google has consolidated locations reporting into one report. Specifically, the old geographic and user location report are not in one report. There are now drop downs for targeted locations that show performance of the locations you're targeting and match locations that show the locations matched based on either the user's physical location or location of interest. So this is something that we touched on last week. But last week, it was just kind of people tweeting about it. This week, Ginny Marvin released this amazing article with a workaround. And she talks you through how to make a custom report in editor to get the actual user location data. So if you're tired of whining about it, like we are after last week, definitely look this up and figure out how to fix it. And we have another story from Greg of the Year, PPC Greg. (laughs) He's just given him that title. It's only October. I mean, it's early. Um, so he got an email about the new insights page beta that we talked about earlier in the show. And he has a little sneaking suspicion about it. He says, not all of the missing searches, but some of them will begin to show in our so far non-existent insights tab. So maybe things that are coming in that you don't get your click data on, they'll just come in as like a new emerging trend which I think is an interesting thought. And I'd rather have it in my search terms report personally. I don't know about you guys. I mean, if it's an emerging trend, it should be considered significant, no? I mean, I I hope Greg's right. I have a sneaking suspicion he's wrong on this. Sorry, Greg, there's only room for one here. Just joking, (laughs) love you, Greg. Um, But we've seen that exact presentation before where Google came out and said, what is most important? data. We look at your data all at the same time, taking away all the data. So I hope that what he's talking about will come to fruition, but don't get your hopes up. I got a feeling this is just them saying data matters while they're taking away all the advertisers data. Yeah. And I don't think if they did have it in the new insights tab, it'd really be anything that people could use the way they could 
in the search terms report. Like, it's not like you'd know you were matching with it and you could exclude it. They'd just be like, oh, look at this new trend. Do you want to add it as a new keyword? And I would say, no, thank you. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. And next up from Jeremy Packy at Jeremy Packy on Twitter. He says, Microsoft advertising keyboard shortcuts have arrived. I personally wrote in a request to get these just like me and my street paving. <laughs> it's cool to see them in the <laughs> interface. Um, so Jess, I think reported on this story a while ago when they made all those Microsoft advertising announcements, mm -hmm. they announced all the keyboard shortcuts and now they're actually here. Um, some of these are kind of crazy and it's like, who would use these? I'm going to quiz you guys on a couple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Jess, what do you think GJ does? Go Jess. <laughs> no. It just cheers for me. No. <laughs> Go to ad groups. Like nobody's going to remember that. Greg, shift S. That's going to go to create an ad. C, search campaigns. Oh. Jess, shift E. Close window. C, dynamic search ads. <laughs> Greg, last one. Shift T. Make a new keyword. No, see smart campaigns. Like nobody's ever going to remember any of these. You're going to yeah. need to print this out and like put it in your cube if people are working in cubes right and now. And by the time not. you look it up, you could have <laughs> just there. clicked to it. Like, Greg, you're kind of a keyboard shortcut guy, aren't you? No, I like in, in, in Google ads, I use GT all the time, go to. Yeah. And GT, you get the quick search pop up and you can just go wherever you want instantly. I do it all the time, change history, everything like that, GT. Anyway, it's nice that they're making these and trying to make our lives easier, but nobody's going to remember them, especially not me. Thanks, Microsoft. And next up from Andrea Cruz at Andrea Cruz 92. She has a tip for anyone running campaigns on LinkedIn ads. She says, if you're in a non-English speaking country, don't select only French or Spanish or whatever language you're targeting. If you want to target the whole country, keep it in English. It can help increase your audience size. So fun little tip there from our PPC expert, Andrea Cruz. And if you want more tips like that, seriously, turn into tune into the LinkedIn ads roundtable because there's so many actionable takeaways. And we have another hot take from PPC Greg. He has a notification about auto applied recommendations, which he like spotted in the wild to start. So he got this email and it says, thank you for opting in to hear about auto applied recommendations beta. This feature is continuously adds tailored recommendations to your account at no extra cost. So you never miss an opportunity to reach potential customers. And like what's going on here? They have all these fonts going on and like beta is really small. Like, get it together, Google Ads. And he says- This message is in beta. <laughs> yes. Figure it out. He says, if it was that good, it wouldn't be free, maybe. <laughs> yeah, That could that, have been take of the week. <laughs> we were alerted to this from Menachem Mani on Twitter, who just tagged us, which I love it when people tag us when there's something outrageous from Google Ads. <laughs> and then, yes, PPC Greg responded to him, said, and they're bringing all the fonts. And he's got the fonts <laughs> gradually getting smaller, like this dumb email from Google Ads. And of all the words to have small, you're going to have beta. <laughs> it's just very ironic. No, it's like you're hiding it or something. And yeah, like, guess what? If there's no extra cost, like we talked about before, you're probably the product. They're making money off you. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Am I the Steel Panther guy's product? Um. Oh no, because you paid for it. No, no, he did it. I said, hey, <laughs> as as asked him, I said, hey, would you do this? The name Shep. For some reason, he spelled your name wrong. He spelled it C A M E O. It was way off. But besides oh. that, everything else is fine. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of the product because I just listened to it. I didn't pay for it. Satchel. And closing out paid here, Microsoft Advertising has been testing their new digital marketing center to help small and medium-sized business owners manage their digital marketing across not only Microsoft, but also Google Ads, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We talked about this when they first launched it. And it seems like it's going pretty well because they are now offering it more broadly with an open beta. So 
actually, I was going to say this is an open beta I might actually be interested in on like the Google one only because I want to like Microsoft, but I don't know if it's a good idea to run your campaigns all from one place on different platforms, but now, the only thing to look it out. Check the only out. thing you should do is you should print out, you should use the same inflection in beta as Google ads uses in their emails. <laughs> it is currently in a beta. <laughs> <laughs> And now for our new segment, Beyond Google Ads, because guess what, guys? Google doesn't care about you. We do. And Greg has a tip for us today. Yes. And this week, it is sort of a simple tip, but we actually have that LinkedIn panel coming out Tuesday with a whole lot of tips. So I'm going to keep it really short and sweet here. There are other alternatives, especially for B2B clients, especially in the software side of things. You probably already know this, but... Don't sleep on things like Captera, G2 Crowd, software advice. Your products have to fit that, but it is a way to spend more money. That's one of the things we continually talk about is it. there needs to be more locations to spend money if you're trying to move away from Google Ads or reallocate budget. So check out some of those review sites. While they're doing good at SEO, they can actually drive you traffic. So, And it, it can convert. It can work very, very well. But test it out, and especially on the B2B side and the software side specifically. What's happening in organic? All right, RIP Bing. Welcome, Microsoft Bing. They've got a new name and a new logo, a very gradient y logo. My initial thought when I looked at this nice new bright blue B was that it looked like one of those those epoxy things you see on Instagram where people are like making oceans and waves with epoxies and hair dryers. Have you ever seen that? Or is that just my Instagram? Yeah, my Aunt Susan does it. Yeah, doesn't it look like that a little bit? Like a real beachy. Um, I think it looks like a ribbon. Ooh. It looks like a fish hook to me. Oh. A fancy fish hook. So negative, bud, so negative. Or kind of like the recycling symbol. Ooh, Ooh I yeah. like that. Except well, they open the loop instead of closing it. Is that a pun or something? Is that the point? Don't you know, recycle, reduce, reuse, close the loop? It was no. like a whole song they played for us in elementary school. No, I oh. n- never well. thought about the meaning behind that logo, but it makes sense. Okay, so the only reason that Microsoft gave on the change was that starting today, you'll see a shift in product to Microsoft Bing, which reflects the continued integration of our search experiences across the Microsoft family. Also, later on in the article, it said, that's why we're also excited to announce the expansion of Give With Bing, which helps you make a difference just by searching. No need to open your wallet. You can donate with this but they're expanding the Give With Bing program, even though they changed Bing to Microsoft Bing. It's just, what are you doing? This is incorrect. Right? You're, it's our, that's not it. You just, you're telling me it's not Bing anymore. And then you're like, oh, we're expanding. All right, next up from Search Engine Land Showcase, news features will be coming to the Search and Discover feed. We heard about this back in June. It is going to be a powerful tool for publishers in a way they can make money off of Google News and Discover. And now we can see it in action. So you can check it out in the show notes or head over to the YouTube channel to see what it looks like. And I like it. It's Google is going to be providing significant, they say, content licensing payments to news publishers and have these new package panels that are going to be appearing to the user and news and discover. Um, looks really nice. It's fairly large when you see it. Um, and then you can also, the publishers will have some control there. So you can say, you know, there's some of the stories can be seen that you might be, be behind a paywall. Um, and the other thing is there's no ranking implications within Google news yet that they say. So if you aren't logged into this, it's not like it's going to hurt you. Um, although I would imagine down the road, if I were Google trying to maximize my investment, maybe something like that would be shown more, even though they're saying it's not right now. And next up, Google has confirmed an indexing issue that hit both canonicalization and mobile indexing. There was a big issue that was noticed in the beginning of September and Google's Danny Sullivan on his at search liaison Twitter handle said, There's no action to take with these issues on the part of site owners. We apologize for the issues here and are working rapidly to resolve them. We'll update this thread as each is corrected. Well, I do have one thing that site owners should do is if you're a publisher or somebody that could really be impacted by this, 
put some notes in your Google Analytics, put some annotations in there so that you know what happened. Um, as of October 2nd, Google's Danny Sullivan said that the issue impacted roughly 0.2% of our index, which is actually massive, even though it doesn't sound that big, um, beginning September 20th until late yesterday around 4.30 p.m. And then on October 5th, there was an update saying, we've now restored about 25% of the URLs impacted by the canonical issue and about 50% of those impacted by the mobile indexing issue. So something to watch for and just note in your analytics. I feel like last week they would have called this a bug, but this week they're avoiding that because of the bug that infiltrated the vice presidential debate. <laughs> infiltrated. <laughs> Right? That sounds like a bug to me. Why aren't they just calling it that? That would admit that they messed up. Yeah, I don't think that would fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and next up, I heard it from Glenn Gabe, BFF of the show, that there's a Discover and Web Stories update. He saw it being tested, and then Google put out a blog post where there is going to be a Web Stories carousel, a very large carousel at the top of Discover, and it was rolling out October 6th in the US, Brazil, and India. And check it out in the show notes. It is a huge component. Glenn has been talking about this nonstop because he's been talking about it. We've been talking about it nonstop. And the you can see the, the big example of it. The example, though, is fairly strange. And also, I hadn't heard anything about Missy Misdemeanor Elliot until today in hey. this web story until you just said it, Jess. But the web That's story crazy. talks about uh, 2020 cars. Then it has Missy Elliott and how she brought back leather track suits. Why they left? <laughs> Were they ever here? Then like this person's discover feed must be like they, they must be the most well-rounded person in the world. <laughs> so weird. Then it goes to why gold is still important for the economy. Then it goes to vegan peanut butter cookies after the, the leather in Missy Elliott. Mm. Then it goes to the cutest job in the world where you're looking at llamas, how the future of the of flights will be driven by pigeons, which just sounds dangerous. <coughs> how you can play a video game Netrunner is Cyberpunk 2077. I don't even know what that means. And then how you can remove gel polish from your nails. Like, oh man, you gotta rip it off. It's disgusting. Oh well, you don't need to look at that one anymore, folks. Head on over to YouTube and see how Shep did it live. But what a well-rounded person that is. I mean, man, they got a lot of news there. That's got to be something like the phone in the Apple store and everyone's just coming in. <laughs> it's just collecting everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And if you haven't started with web stories yet, Glenn Gabe has a great post. We featured a few times. We'll put it in the show notes. And our own Sarah Burke, not a listener of the show, but a employee at Cypress North, has a great article on how you can get analytics and web stories. It's really just use a new plugin and there's an example of where it goes. So if you had used the beta version and haven't upgraded, you have a reason to, you can get analytics easy now. So check it out. I need Next. to defend data by Sarah because the last yeah. time you called her out on the show as not being a listener, she brought it up in a meeting that she heard something on our show. So I think she's a listener. I believe it was last week. Well, at data by Sarah knows that we love her and I know she's a secret fan. She just doesn't know. She's too, she's too busy to listen. Yeah. She's very busy. She's got data to do. I know. She's she like, does all my data. I she just, does all the data. Sarah, do my data. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And next up from Jennifer Slag over at the SEM Post is a look at updates from the quality raters. The biggest thing where Google did less experiments in 2019, but they actually led to more improvements. You can check it out over there. All right. And from Search Engine Journal, Google My Business is giving business owners more data to work with in a series of updates to improve your performance reports. So the biggest thing is you can see how many times a profile was surfaced in their performance reports, not how many times it was clicked, but how many times you were shown during a search. And also in a sort of related thing, if your video, you had big videos you put up on Google My Business you, and they're capping the video size down from 100 megabytes to 75 megabytes. And over at Moz is a new SEO diversity survey. And it is from the same company that did the gender surveys before, uh, Nicole DeLeon. And I believe her company is North Star Metrics, if I'm right cool. If I'm wrong, sorry, Nicole. So she took a look at black, indigenous, and people of color and LGBTQ plus folks in the SEO space. And she looked, took a look at their experiences. 
Uh, there's a lot of information in there about pay if you wanted to look at it. And then there was also um, kind of an overarching thought that the people didn't have a big problem with the companies they were in, but the industry in general was a problem. So you know, a lot of really interesting information if you want to see, and, and quite frankly, not great information. So a couple of quick numbers here when they were looking at gender in the LGBTQ plus uh, SEO workforce, people thought that their companies were 20% very diverse, which is nice, 40% somewhat diverse, and that overall was more than 60%, at least somewhat to vary, which is encouraging. Additionally, in the uh, racial and ethnic diversity in SEO workforce, this was more than I would have thought, which was nice. Because you know, if you look at the sample size of some of the conferences and Twitter in general, you don't see a lot of representation. But at the companies, at the at the company, people said that their company fifteen point nine percent were very diverse, and that thirty eight point four were somewhat diverse. So that actually beat my expectations. Maybe I was a little bit too negative on my thoughts there. And then lastly, we took a look at some of the microaggressions towards um, these communities. And some of the top ones were being interrupted or spoken over, having your idea taken by somebody else, being talked down to or treated as less capable than similarly qualified employees, being paid less than similarly qualified employees, and being addressed unprofessionally. There's a great list there. There may be some things you don't even know you're doing. So please go check this out over on Moz. Thank you, Nicole. All right, and Julie Bacini, friend of the show on Marketing of Talk One, has a link to a great thread by Matt Stoller at Matthew Stoller on Twitter about the new antitrust proceedings in court. And when we put that in, little did I know that Sam Tomlinson, uh, a caller on the show a few weeks back, made the world's largest thread. It is amazing. He took a look at all the documentation. The last I checked, it was like 135 tweets over on Twitter with him breaking down all the information that you need on antitrust. So you can look at 135 tweets instead of 7,000 pages or whatever it is. So thank you, Sam. That is a fantastic job that you've done for us. And lastly, there's a new feature in Google My Business called Call History that's being tested. It is going to help any business or user see missed calls that come in from Google Search and Maps. So those calls are gonna be held for 45 days and you can see the time, date, and phone numbers that they were called from. So it isn't available for all businesses right now, only a select group of businesses in the US. And if you're eligible, you will have to opt in to see those numbers. And that is it for me in organic. What's up in social, bud? Okay, first up in social this week, new features for Facebook groups. So Facebook announced a bunch of new stuff this week, including making it easier for users to discover public groups. Starting initially as a test though, relevant Facebook group discussions will be surfaced in the newsfeed when someone posts a link or reshares a relevant post to those groups, so that's interesting. And for group admins that are looking to make it rain, Facebook has now added group promotions to its brand collabs manager tool. That is the name of it, they abbreviate collaboration. So brands looking for new opportunities and sponsored content will now be able to find relevant public groups to connect with and see information on things like member engagement, demographics, and previous brands they've worked with. It's really cool. We have a screenshot of that in the show notes and also if you're watching us on YouTube. Facebook has also added what they are calling the admin assist feature, which allows group administrators to set up automated rules that help with moderating posts. So that's really nice and convenient. They've also added pinnable topics and a couple other things. So if you run a Facebook group, you definitely want to check out the links we have in the show notes. There's lots and lots to read about more than we have time to talk about. You got the highlights because we I don't care. even know the point of being in a group if it's public. Well, some of these features, they're for public groups now, but it said that they may look to expand into private. So does that cover you and your Taylor Swifty friends? Yeah, like the yourselves? whole point of being private is so that you have a safe space to talk about like how you've been waiting two months for your Taylor Swift cardigan to arrive in the mail and it's not there yet and you haven't received an email. You don't need everyone in the world to see that. You sound depressed, but you got your cardigan. I, I saw know, a I picture of you in it. <laughs> I'm Was surprised it? you didn't wear it on the show. I got it, but it took a really long time and it came with this confetti. You saved the confetti. I thought it, I thought you got a pullover. Oh, I got a cardigan. What's your joke? <laughs> no joke. 
So the next story features hashtag spawn con, but we're not the ones spawning said con, so I think it's okay to cover. Adweek has a new guide that, quote, answers all of your burning questions about Gen Z, which I don't know about you folks, but I really don't personally have any. But I downloaded the guide anyway because it's free. It's just gated. And I'm not going to spoil it because that would be obviously a total betrayal to our industry. But the article does spoil one fact, so I will share it with you. Did you know that Snapchatters are 34% more likely than non-Snapchatters to buy from brands that support their local community? What? <laughs> Read the guide, whatever. That actually surprised me. I, I just feel like young people who I assume is who are, is on Snapchat doesn't really care about Shop Small. So that was a nice shock. So for anyone that well, is- This is gonna be great with TikTok and Walmart. Can't wait to see this. Yeah, right. How would they know that? That's the thing though. Walmart's a big guy, right? We wanna support the small guys. So you Snapchat. So anyway, for anyone that is interested in advertising on Snapchat or already doing so, definitely check it out. The insights are actually from Snapchat. So good stuff in there. All right, quick news from The Verge for Slack users. Slack is going to be adding Instagram-like stories and push-to-talk audio calls for the pandemic era. This seems completely unnecessary, but I did via Slack receive a video file of an Instagram story from none other than Mark today. So maybe they're onto something. Of course. What, this is the actual thing that they're like, I bet we could build this. <laughs> and they just did it to, to prove. What's that quote from Jurassic Park about that? They, they spared no expense. No, not that. Oh, Rar. <laughs> Life finds a way. <laughs> Rar. Now you keep going. I'll, I'll I'll get that brilliant that brilliant quote. Okay. I don't know. I think this is kind of a fun idea. Like people are gonna just you're gonna make amazing Slack stories. I'm not though because I have work to do. Like I I can't. This is this is a, a remote working tool, right? Or I mean, we even use it when we're in the office. I don't know. I feel like I could make great Slack stories, but then I'd be doing it at ten at night and bothering you, and you don't want that from me. But sometimes things happen at 10 at night and I like want to tell you guys, but I don't want to put it in the random channel because I'm worried nobody will respond. Um, like <laughs> <laughs> like that cameo session um, with the big cat rescue lady that I sent you last night. Oh, yeah, What's her name? Oh, Carol Baskin. <laughs> I saw it this morning. <laughs> What's cameo? <laughs> anyway, um, the, 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 never heard of it. <laughs> the quote was from Jeff Goldblum. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. He's a great flat story. Yeah. Love no, he's him. not. He's such a know it all. Yeah, but he's like cool. He wears the leather tracksuit like Missy Elliott. All right. I have no good segue into this next story. So Facebook has officially responded to the social dilemma, which is that self proclaimed documentary drama hybrid that you've probably seen on Did Netflix. you try to watch that? No, I didn't. Unwatchable. And I didn't try to read this response either because I don't care, but I'm leaving it. Here it it is insane. And then the other, is it like, bad? we should watch and have a, a talk about oh, it. I watched it. Did yeah. you like it, Shep? Oh my God. I am absolutely, are, are we keeping this in or should I save it? Yeah, keep it in, whatever. I am angry for the time that was stolen from my life. Me too. With the dramatic reenactments. That oh added God. absolutely nothing. It's two movies in one. It's the documentary of people talking about it. And then in between segments, there's this family who's like, everyone's addicted to technology. I didn't, I don't want to watch this. I signed up to watch it, a documentary. Yeah. Documentary it, it, drama hybrid says so in the description. It's, it, and the whole thing is talking about like advertising. I couldn't, I couldn't make it to the end. They're like, it's advertising. They're trying to make you to buy things. And it's like, yeah, this, this is. This is what you what you do. You it's advertise kid toys on Nickelodeon. That's what you're trying to influence them to buy things. This is what you do. Yeah, yeah. trying to get. Yeah, data. that's what I kept saying. Like, you're helping businesses and like making the economy work. Sorry, I, I, there's definitely like shady stuff that happens, but this was it was out of control. They acted like we're all robots and like they're the puppeteer. It was a bit much. I'm sorry. Now turn your phone off. Like, not a big deal. Get rid of the app. <laughs> Don't have notifications. Day. I really it's hope so Facebook insane. is listening. I really hope Facebook well, is if listening you listen, because you took their side. And the other thing though, it too, I'm looking at this and I'm like, has anybody ever used ads manager? Like they're making everything seem like you're being pulled by these puppets. That everything's about a, making a buck and you can't get the, the darn thing to load. And it's like, what? what? They're making this, they paint to be out, painted out like it's the absolute best thing on the planet. And it's like, oh, well I can beat, you know, maximize conversions it's like i don't know it's you look at the things that is like twitter's ad 
platform is unusable. It's unusable. It's a terribly made movie, bottom line. They, it's an hour and 45 minutes. They're, you think you're signing up for a documentary. Half of it is a scary tale, fake narrative about a family that's addicted to technology and Lila breaks the glass on the cage that her mom puts the phone in. That's not Facebook's fault. Yeah. That's the parents' fault. It's bad parenting. I was watching the thing and the girl breaks the thing open and they're just like, don't talk to her. It's like, what are you doing? Like, how, how are you not disciplining your child for smashing everything in the house. You're just like, that's huge red flags from parenting, right? I wouldn't know yet. Yeah, well look, you just use that as a lesson. <laughs> Don't parent like those people. Jess, you gotta watch it. Well, I do need to now, now that I know it's that good. Okay. We should have just done that as the WTH, oops. <laughs> yeah, there's no WTH this week, folks. What's there, next, Jess? There was. <laughs> There's a whole lot. It's just everywhere. All right. Other Facebook news. They have announced a new mental health hub with resources around stress relief, grief, self-harm, and suicide. So hopefully all of our dear listeners out there are healthy and well. But if you're not, or you know someone who is struggling, please check this out. It is there for you. It's a nice resource. And if you're one of those people that had pulled back because you didn't like what Facebook is doing as an advertiser marketer, they are actually trying to make steps forward. And they're also banning political ads come November 3rd as well. So they are trying to take some steps in the right direction, albeit a little bit late, but love to see something like this. One more good thing Facebook is doing from NBC News's Brandy Zadronzi at Brandy Zadronzi on Twitter. Facebook has banned QAnon across all of its platforms. And if you don't know what that is, you can just Microsoft bang it quick. I'm not no, do don't, 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 don't do, do it. it. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> then you're a Q person if you do that. Don't do that. Did I say it right? It's QAnon, yeah. right? Okay. You know, you're the leader. <laughs> I had to Google it. I was like, oh, I don't want this in my search history. Should have duck, duck, code. All right. Lastly, a big fat HBD to Instagram. The platform is 10 years old this week. And instead of asking for presents, they gifted users with some new features. They've got a stories map, auto hiding comments, similar to others that have been reported. Again, more platforms doing good and a whole lot more. So happy double digits to Instagram. You are still the one where we actually like to use stories. They grow up so fast. <laughs> and that brings us to our real life segment straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes it's time for working hard or hardly working where we talk about what's going on in our irl work good bad or otherwise okay i have a really annoying one this week if you ever have done an igtv video you like upload the video to instagram then there's no good thumbnails of your video because your video isn't filmed with the phone straight up and down way. And it makes everything on Instagram a square. And then the IGTV thumbnail is the rectangle, the vertical rectangle. It's the dumbest thing I have ever heard of in my entire life. It's a waste of everyone's time. And this is why nobody does IGTV. All right, I had um, some ad disapprovals. I'm not as angry as Chef about it, but this is something I just hadn't run into before on Google ads. We are advertising a product with some display ads that had people in them. And we thought that it would be sensitive to the times to show them wearing masks, but it has nothing to do with the pandemic. We're just trying again to be timely with our imagery. And we got disapproved for sensitive events. And that was the, the policy violation that we got. The good news is that we submitted an appeal for reconsideration and we were then approved. So just keep an eye out. That's something I hadn't seen yet. So look for it. That seems like fine, a bad, they need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying to take advantage of people or cause panic or whatever's in the actual policy, but it's you, just something. Came one up. could argue it's more sensitive to show people congregating close together without masks. Right, like more sensitive in a bad way. Like this is, ooh, yeah. this is bad, don't show. Yeah, exactly. We're trying to do the right thing, Google. Okay, and on my side, pretty quick here, I talked about it before. A few weeks back, we had one client that is B2B shopping and we had this product that we really, really, really needed to move. And we, last ditch effort, set up a smart shopping campaign around this product and very, very close proximity products as well. Um, and it started off doing terribly, terribly. And we're, it, the return ad spend, I think, was 21 cents for a dollar spent. Um, and we got that actually to a 4.6 ROAS. So the return on ads spent, so 
So $4.06 back on every buck we spent, which was awesome. I never thought it was going to happen. I wanted to get rid of it. It's one thing to test, even if you aren't a fan of it, see if it works, prove that it doesn't work, or see if it does work and go into things with open mind. And if it beats your hypothesis, great, you're making more money. So I just wanted an update on that. And now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's Cool Tool is LinkedIn ads bulk from Beta Linked. Ooh, Beta Linked, AJ Wilcox. This is a great tool, Jess, you're gonna talk about it, but if you want more insight, intelligence, and intellect from AJ, you can hear it coming on the show Tuesday, our second ever Marketing O Talk as we keep going with the beyond Google ads and talk about LinkedIn. Sorry to interrupt, Jess, what That's is okay. this tool doing for you? So it does exactly what you think it does. It is a bulk editing tool for LinkedIn ads. It's been a while since we've dubbed anything aptly named, but good job, AJ. So this tool works across all the platforms, ad formats, and it supports all of the media from video to carousels, even lead gen forms. It does everything that you need it to. There's a free version, which does have a couple feature limitations, but why not play with it anyway? And if you love it, you can upgrade for unlimited publishing up to 1,000 ads at a time, which is a lot considering even one ad on LinkedIn sometimes feels like it's just going to break your computer if you touch it. So to get started, head on over to linkedinadsbulk.com and check it out. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's Must Read Marketing Article of the Week comes from Jeff Baker over on Search Engine Land. And Jeff made his own study comparing the data from eight SEO tools. He, in the byline, says, spoiler, the numbers you'll find don't match up. SEO metric tools are general trend analysis and competitor, competitor benchmarking, not on specific numbers. And that's what we tell our clients all the time. It's like, these are trends. These are trends. This is not actual data. They're making a guess. These are estimates. But Jeff wanted to find out whose estimates are the best. And he took a look at linking root domains and who was the most accurate. Domain organic keywords ranking numbers one through 10 in US search. And then did a little bonus for everybody out there the estimated monthly search traffic. And he said, it's still a work in progress, but you can check all of that out over on Search Engine Land if you're in the market for a SEO tool. Thank you, Jeff. Upfluence helps marketers streamline their influencer marketing campaigns so you can take your campaigns to the next level. Manage every aspect of your influencer campaigns in a single platform from influencer discovery and outreach to relationship management and campaign tracking. Start streamlining your influencer marketing campaigns today. If you want to get Upfluence, go to get.upfluence.com forward slash S-E-J to get started. That is get.upfluence.com forward slash S-E-J. All right, that does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Remember, you can catch everything from this show on marketingoclock.com. And while you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock, part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. If you're looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com for links to all the articles that we covered. And please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. Welcome to this week's Shoot in the Heck, where after our famous Friday news show, we don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the heck. Okay, today we're going to have everyone's favorite competition. Um, no, it's not a Yo Mama joke showdown. It is a pun showdown. And we have two, uh, they like to think that they're the best pun people around here. No, I don't think I'm the best. I know Jess is the best. Oh, thanks. Oh, so we don't even wow. have to do this. No, That's I'm the first. I, I'm still, I'll still be out here like Jimmy Buckets, like you've seen in the basketball app, trying to bring the team back. That's okay, Jimmy so we're going to have joke. a little pun competition. I'm going to put 45 seconds on the clock. 
And you guys just need to go back and forth. Hopefully there isn't some weird stall like there would be if I was involved in this. That's why I am the <laughs> judge. And I'm just going to pick a winner at the end and we'll see what happens. There's no rules. The theme is autumn. Some call it fall. Do, what, like, does somebody have to start? Like what? Yes. Okay. I'm going to start the timer and um, Jess is going to start. <laughs> Tell us. Are we ready? <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, go. Well, since this is the very beginning, I guess we should start with autumn and Eve. I almost fall out of my chair with that one. <laughs> Leave my sense of humor alone. <laughs> that joke was so corny. Everything's getting dark early. <laughs> That's not even a pun. That was good. Keep going. That was good, Jess. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this doesn't go past midnight or I'll turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> I, I'm out. See, I suck. All right, go, Jess. This is either going to be a trick or a treat for our listeners. <laughs> oh, I hope that everybody doesn't over engorge themselves with puns. Okay. <laughs> Jess is clearly the winner. I, I, I'm more seasoned. There you go. All right, I, I'll come back. I'm not going to give up. Wow, Jess, that was really impressive. Okay, so we're doing this again, I'm you're saying? Sweating. Yes. One Maybe more. I'll let you prepare next time, Greg. No, I don't need to prepare. Just, just, just got me that round. I'm not going to give up. I didn't prepare. Oh, are you saying we're doing another one? Yeah. Okay. Right yeah. now? Oh, oh, I'm nervous now. <laughs> okay. I just used up everything I had. Okay. I have to come yes. up with a new theme. The theme is fruits. <laughs> Greg starts. Go. I don't know. To me, this topic just seems kind of bananas. That was mine. Um, if this is as good as the last one, it'll be an apples to oranges comparison, probably. Well, that doesn't sound very appealing to me. I hope it's a fruitful conversation we have. Well, we have to really set the seed for this to work. <laughs> Heads, shoulders, knees, and fruit toes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even kiwi what you did there. Oh, no, I thought it was grape. <laughs> Why did you okay, that even say banana? <laughs> <That's time. laughs> Wait, head, shoulders, knees, and fructose? Fructose? Like hot high sugar? fructose corn syrup? Yeah, but isn't that the sugar from That's a fruit? vegetable. <laughs> okay. No, there's not high fructose corn syrup in a fruit, Jess. No, but fructose. Isn't that the like fructose? fructose? It's fruit. Okay. I gotta I gotta disqualify Jess for that. Yes, no, 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 no. Look it up. Look yeah. it up. I'm pretty sure fructose is the fruit and sugar. Hang on. What is fructose? What is she doing? Isn't even good You're not anyway. the judge. Fructose or fruit sugar is a simple ketonic monosaccharide. But it was also so random. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fruit related. It was on topic. I win. The people can decide. Okay, so we'll keep it at a tie. We'll do a rematch later on. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for participating. I'm sorry, folks. And we will see you next week.